your spirit can sometimes get weary and tired with everything that's going on. But in those instances, you need to remind yourself that God is with you and that God is still on his throne. Draw nigh to me and I will draw near to you is not just a biblical statement to persuade believers, but rather a commitment by God to deliver his loved ones. The truth is, God never makes a promise he can't fulfill. The integrity of his words has been proven from age to age, from generation to generation. Therefore, this calls for a necessity to stick to him through thick and thin, or good times and bad times. And for those of us who know the Lord, we know that we are never alone. No matter what we may experience, He is with us. God is the only one that sees us through all situations of life. He doesn't just show up when things are rosy. He is there for us always. But what I have come to find in my life is that God seems to get even closer to us during the difficult circumstances of our life. He doesn't help us from afar, but he gets right close and personal and gets into your situation with you. Moses found out that he gets into Egyptian palaces and negotiates with you. He found out that he gets into Red Seas and parts them. He walks with you in the desert. Joshua found out he gets into wars with you as you conquer kingdom after kingdom after kingdom. Daniel found out he gets into lion's dens. The three Hebrew men found out he gets into the fire of furnaces with you. Lazarus found out his voice echoes in tombs. All through the Bible, we have testimonies from Moses right through to John about the faithfulness of God. Let us take a brief look at some of these. The Three Hebrew Men Daniel 3, verses 1 to 25 The Three Hebrew Men Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were true worshippers of the living God who refused to bow to the golden image of King Nebuchadnezzar. A proclamation was made by the king that whosoever would not bow down to his image should be thrown into the burning fiery furnace. Of course, these three young men had the choice to obey the king's authority, but rather they chose to trust in the Lord and in the power of his might. Their audacious response to the king was an amazing one. Verse 16 Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. And in the end, what we see is a mighty God coming to the aid of his children, even in the midst of a fiery furnace. Verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. That is God for you. He will surely cross all hurdles to deliver his own, even in the midst of fire. God would come through for you if you will not, but stick with him. So believe me as I tell you, as the fire roars in your life, the same fourth man who was in the fire with these boys will be with you in your situation. Daniel in the Den of Lions Daniel 6 Verses 1 to 22. Daniel is yet another child of God that lived an exemplary life in the land of slavery. Daniel was a faithful servant of God that never exchanged his communion with the Lord for the king's authority. Once again, God showed his prowess over difficult situations by delivering Daniel from the den of lions. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, 
O king, have I done no hurt? Verse 22 God is ready to do the same for you today if you would stick with him. Paul and Silas in prison Acts 16 verses 25 to 26 Here again, this is the strong hand of the Almighty God being felt amidst his children, even in the prison. Paul and Silas decided to pray and sing rather than complain. This is a sign that they believed in the mightiness of God. God therefore revealed himself by breaking off their chains and shackles. God is set to deliver you from every prison of life if you will trust in him. Any bondage of any kind, God will set you free. When we say God will make a way, what is implied is that God has solutions for you. He will make an escape for you, even in the middle of the toughest battle. The feeling of defeat and hopelessness we have is a manipulation from the devil to blind us from seeing what God can do for us. If you want to see the manifestation of God's power, you have to believe in his power to save. Jeremiah 32 verse 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? There is no impossibility in God. There is no challenge greater than God's saving power. This is a truth we have to always preach to ourselves to strengthen our faith. Everything is possible for a man who believes. God has shown up for me in miraculous ways, through people and things that I never expected. He has proven that my joy is his priority. This is how he feels about every one of us. He is interested in putting a smile on our faces. God has the power to make our joy full. He only needs us to call out to him in faith. When troubles come your way, be glad because it is an opportunity for God to demonstrate his mighty power. Rejoice, because it is an opportunity to benefit from God's benevolence and wonder-working power. Our challenges make room for God to demonstrate his power in our lives. Our troubles build up our faith and teach us to lean more on God. Remember Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Rather than fret and lose hope, we should pray with thanksgiving in our hearts, believing that God will show us the way. Our challenges show us how weak we really are and how much we need God. This is how God's strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. God wants our total dependence on him. He doesn't want to be one of our many options. He wants to be our only choice. Call on him today. Let him hear your voice today and see the miraculous way through which he will manifest himself to you. Romans 8 verse 28 tells us that all things work together for the good of those who love God. You may see a problem, but God sees a solution. God has promised us that no challenge can swallow us up. Do not allow the enemy to becloud your mind. I really want you to be motivated today that there's nothing the good Lord cannot do. He has helped men in the past and yours won't be an exception. Just stick to God and his word. He said he will never leave nor forsake us. This is a great promise we should hold on to even in our darkest hours. Though our mountains may stand strong and the storms may rage, but sticking to God makes all the difference as this is the sure way to conquering all our problems. Are you struggling to pay up your bills? Are you going through a bitter divorce? Or perhaps you're stuck in debts and you seem not to know how to go about it just to trust the Lord. He is strongly with you and he is able to deliver you. Just stick with him. God has the solution to every problem.
When God is with you, you don't have to live a life tormented by fear. We need to remind ourselves of the other name Jesus was given by his heavenly father, the name Emmanuel. Because the name Emmanuel means God with us. We as children of God can live with the security of knowing that we are not alone. Jesus in John 14, 27 states, My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. God is with you. Fear not because of Isaiah 41 verse 10, where God states, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. No matter what you are facing, fear not. God does not abandon his people. God does not abandon his people. Even before the coming of his son, he was near his people. And he is still near all of us in everything that we face. In every storm we face, God is with us. In every grief we bear, God is with us. In every sorrow we face, God is with us. Who is bigger, your fears or God? There is no need for us to be fearful, regardless of what we are facing in this world. I am here to remind you that God is with you and that God is still on his throne. Regardless of the present circumstances and what the future brings tomorrow, God is still on his throne. Our problem is, when we use our carnal minds to try to understand God, we only think that God is on his throne when everything is going well in our lives. When we are healthy and the sun is shining and the bills are paid, that's when God is on his throne. But regardless of situations, we must remember that God is on his throne. Look at the life of Joseph. God was on his throne when he received the coat of many colors. God was on his throne when he was sold into slavery. God was on his throne when he became Potiphar's household manager. God was on his throne when Potiphar's wife lied about him and sent him to prison. God was on his throne when he became the second most powerful man in the world at that time. What's the point of that story? The point of that story is this. God is still on his throne. God hasn't fallen asleep and the devil has taken control and is now calling all the shots. God is on his throne. He is in complete control. He never sleeps and he never slumbers and he is with you. He knows what you are going through. He knows the condition of your finances. He knows the condition of your health. He knows what bills need to be paid. He knows who has left you. He knows who has cheated on you. He knows who has betrayed you. And just as God was on his throne in the life of Joseph, God is on the throne in your life. And just as God turned all the negative things the devil did in Joseph's life to his advantage, God will turn all the negative things you have experienced to your advantage. But some of you might say, I am too old for God to turn my life around. Or time is running out in my life. God is not a God that requires two days, two years or 30 years for him to gather his power and his resources together in order to turn your life around. God can do it suddenly. Joseph went from being a prisoner to being the second most powerful man in the world in a day. Just imagine from being a prisoner to the top dog in one day. I am simply here to remind you, whatever you are facing, whatever you are facing, whatever uncertainty you are facing during this period of time, there is no need to fear because God is with you and God is on his throne. For more prayers from Line of Judah, subscribe to our prayer channel. Click the link in the description. Psalms 34 verse 15 The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. God is omnipresent. He sees everything, knows everything and he is everywhere. God's eyes will never go dim. He does not sleep neither does he slumber. 
God keeps watch over all of us at all times when we are aware of it and even when we're not aware of it. Our lack of awareness of his divine protection has never stopped him from watching over us. What happens to you when you're fast asleep? That's a question only God can answer. When all the systems of your body are suspended, God keeps watch over us. You see, we didn't hire God to do this. We didn't hire God to guard over us. He just took the responsibility simply because he cares. Indeed, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Isn't that wonderful? No one ever asked God to do it initially, but he just took the responsibility up. I actually believe I know why he took the responsibility up to watch over us. The reason why God took up the responsibility to be our guardian is because you matter. Yes, you matter. To him, you matter to God. You could mean absolutely nothing to the whole world, but to God, you mean everything. To God, you mean so much more than you will ever realize or know. You mean so much to God that he would let his own son die to cover your sins, to cover your bad decisions, your mess ups, your setbacks. That's how much you matter to him. Let's look at Isaiah 43. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. You know what this first line in Isaiah 43 tells me? This tells me that you are not an accident. You see, God is the one who created you. Stop living with this feeling of rejection. You have no right to feel this way. Absolutely no right to live with this feeling of rejection. Your mother and your father are not the ones that created you. They are simply the vehicle that God used to create you. How do I know this? Because Isaiah 43 then goes on to say, and he that formed thee, O Israel, God is the one who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by my name, thou art mine. You are God's, God made you, God is making you, God redeemed you, God called you, and he says here that you are his ownership that's why he looks after you because you are his god is jealous over his people and will not permit evil to befall on you this is why david knew that surely goodness and mercy will follow him all the days of his life god is watching over you and that is the reason you are still alive till this very day in all honesty Every time I personally look back at my life, I know if it was not for the hand of the Lord, if it was not for the covering of the Lord, I would not be here today. And I believe that you can look back over your life and agree with me that if it wasn't for the Lord, you wouldn't be here today. If the Lord would take away his protective covering for your life, it wouldn't take long for the enemy to get his hands on you. God has already promised you to watch over you. He cannot lie, neither can he fail in his promises. The Lord promised to be with us in all situations, in all hard moments. Isaiah 43 verse 2 then goes on to say, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. How wonderful is that? He's not sending an angel. He's not sending anyone else. God says, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. One important thing that believers should know is that God did not say, that there are no evil challenges 
or tough times that we will face in this world. But he promised, he promised to keep watch over us. He promised, I will be with you. When Job was struck by the devil, the Lord kept him from dying. He preserved his life. Although we may face challenges and obstacles in life, God promises he will be with you. I want to remind you today, God is not against you. He is for you. He is the great shepherd that watches over his sheep. He watches over us day and night. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? There is no one that can stand against someone who has the Lord on his side. Ask Goliath. Goliath has a first-hand testimony of the results of facing someone that has God on his side or on her side. The Bible says that we are the apple of God's eye. That is whatever happens to a believer affects God. This is why God will not allow something to come to the way of believers. He helps to moderate our experiences and would not allow anything beyond our abilities to befall us. God has several ways of protecting us from evil and he chooses the most appropriate method that he deems fit in every situation. For instance, he could give his angels orders to come protect us from the arrows of the enemy or even to restrain us from going different places at different times. At times, God could also decide to protect us from evil without our least awareness of it. Whichever way God chooses, his plan and purpose is to ensure our safety. Psalms 105 verse 14 and 15 reads, He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. There are several times where the voice of God has gone ahead of us to restrict the enemy from doing harm to us. Paul testified of the comfort which an angel which was sent by God gave to him while he was endangered in a ship. Acts 27 verse 23 to 24 relates Paul's testimony saying, For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, whose I am, and in whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. The protection of the Lord over his people is strong, that he could choose to protect a hundred people just for the sake of one of his beloved. Because of Paul, God saved all that were on the ship, some of us do not so much value the protection of God over our lives. Do you know that God can be watching over the company you work for simply because you work there? God has covered you in a garment of light. You are a child of God. The world knew you on the day you came into the world, but God knew you before you were formed in the womb. Your mother and father were not the first people to look at you. Before the worlds were created, God knew you. You lived in the mind of God long before you were born into this world. Before you were beep on the monitor. God monitored your mother's pregnancy. He watched you in your mother's womb when your hands were still webbed in her belly. He created you. He formed you. He redeemed you. You are His. God doesn't make mistakes. And you are not a mistake. So long you have lived with this feeling of rejection 
as if you don't belong. But you do belong. You belong to God. And He cares about you more than you will ever know, more than you will ever understand. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. No, not counted, but numbered. Your mind is not big enough to fully grasp His love for you. He knows everything about you. He knows when you sit down and when you rise up. He knows every single one of your thoughts, even before you think it. You will never surprise Him. He knows what you are going to do before you do it. He knows all your desires. He knows what is in your heart. He sent His only Son for you. The Angel in Your House Angels are beings that we like to talk about. They don't sound scary like demons. Many children love to hear stories where an angel saved a child or how God sent an angel to save people. We also call people angels because of their attitude and the gentle way they behave. And if someone selflessly helps you, you call them angels. The word angel is used for different purposes and different people. A husband can call his wife an angel because of the attitude or beauty she possesses. Angels are generally servants of God. They are the ones God sends to carry out some tasks in heaven and on earth. And the truth is, the Bible is a book of angels. In Christianity, angels have a great role in our lives, in our families, and every area of our lives. Even as you're listening to me right now, there is a strong likelihood that at least one angel is there present in your home. Isn't that wonderful? Psalm 91 verses 11 and 12 For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. We read this part of the Bible and we say, thank God. We often neglect or pay less attention to angels here. We don't even think about them and the works they are to do in keeping us safe. We honestly need to thank God for sending angels to protect us. The President has the Secret Service Department protecting him, the best of the humans looking after him. But you, but you on the other hand, have the secret angels watching over you, covering your back. There are instances where God sent his angels for some special work. God sent angels to Lot. Lot was the nephew of Abraham. They separated and Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah. The sin of the people in Sodom and Gomorrah was so great that God decided to destroy them. Angels were sent to Lot to warn him about the impending destruction coming upon the city. They were also sent to Lot to guide his family out of the city. Genesis 19 verse 1 And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. The main work of these angels was to guide the family of Lot out of that city that they were to destroy. Genesis 19 verse 16 And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. The same way the angels of the Lord help the family of Lot out of the city to save them from destruction is the same way God has sent angels to you and your family to keep you safe from any evil that may want to happen around you. The angels are always around you and they cannot keep their eyes off of you. There is an angel in your home. Jacob saw angels in his dream. We often close our eyes to the fact that in this dream, angels are going up and down the ladder. There is someone at the top of the ladder, and that is the Lord God. What that means is that these angels are constantly moving from heaven to earth, carrying out assignments. They are always going out from the presence of God to carry out what they were told to do. One of the things they are told to do is to keep you and your family safe. They are in your house all the time looking out for you. This is why 
You have nothing to worry about. God sent them here to be with you. Matthew 18, verse 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Elijah was surrounded by the Syrian army. The servant that was with him became terrified and told Elijah about the army. Elijah was not bothered and he prayed that God opened the eyes of his servant to see. Therefore, when the servant of Elisha arose early and went out, he was surprised to see an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. He became terrified and fearful of what his eyes were showing him. He knew that they were doomed and ready for destruction. We shouldn't be so quick to judge the servant because I think this is something that we do a lot also. We look at the situations and the storms and the enemies that surround us in the natural and forget that we have the Lord on our side. What this servant couldn't see was what had already been done in the spirit world. There was a great army of the Lord already prepared for their defense. Elisha had to intervene by praying to God to open the eyes of this servant so that he could see both those who were for him. And when his eyes were open, he was amazed to see a great army of the Lord protecting them from the attack of the Syrian army. 2 Kings 6 verse 17 And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. All this happened through Elisha's prayer. This shows the power of prayer in our lives. I want to highlight this point. God has resources and power you know nothing about. Yes, the spot you are in currently looks like there is no way out. But you have God whose ways are above your ways. The servant only saw the army before him. Just like maybe you are only able to see the problems before you, not knowing the infinite wells of resources God has at his disposal. If the enemies think that they have surrounded you, if they think that they have gotten you and there is no way to go anymore, the Lord will send heavenly warriors with their chariot of fire to smite them. When it comes to the safety of his children, God does not hesitate to send out angels in multitude to keep his people safe. This is the confidence that we have in God through Christ that we are always safe because the angels are always around us. We shouldn't behave like these angels do not exist. We should always thank God for sending them. There is an angel in your home. The angels were with Jesus throughout his life. There are many places in the Bible that the angel of the Lord appeared to people and they did great things. From the Bible, when the angel of the Lord appears to people, there are four things that they do. They warn, they instruct, they bless, and they destroy. We need to understand that as Christians, we all need the angels of the Lord to guide us. If we are praying for protection, this is not that God is not seeing us or God is too busy to look at us, that he sends his angels. The angels are around us on the order of God. They fight for us, they send evil away from us, and they take our requests to God. The Bible also advised us to be good to everyone. We must render help to people who need it. Hebrews 13 verse 2 says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. What are the things the angels in your house will do for you and your family? 1. They will always be around you to deliver you and your family. Psalm 34 verse 7 the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, 
and delivereth them. Some accidents happen at home that can kill. There are little mistakes that can cause huge havoc that should have happened, but in a way that you don't understand. They did not go beyond what you can control. It is not nature. It is the works of the angels sent by God to be in your house. There was a fault in the electrical work of a Christian man's house. He checked it and believed it should be something he can fix. He tried and fixed it, but unknowingly, he had made a wrong connection that could cause a fire outbreak. He went to the changeover switch to put on a light. As he tried to change it, nothing worked. The light did not come on. He had no choice but to call a company to check it. After checking, they went to the man and asked, how did it happen that this house is not on fire by now? The man was confused. They explained to him what ought to happen. This man may not have seen an angel stopping the damage that should have happened physically, but there are angels in the house protecting the occupants. Sometimes you forget to turn off the oven and nothing much happens. Second, they guard you. Exodus 23 verse 20 Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. There is an evil in the world right now. Everywhere you turn to, bad things are happening there. God promised he will send his angels to guard us. It doesn't matter where we travel to. They will always follow us because they are there to guard us. The Lord has been doing good to us, providing us all we wanted. He is still giving us protection. When we are surrounded by evil, the Lord will send his angels to guard us and take us to safety. That is what we enjoy as Christians. Whenever we are in need, God can also use anybody as your angel to help you or provide your needs. These people that God will use as angels might be the people we know. They might be our relatives. But this is God using them for us. They are using our angels that can be seen while the ones that can't be seen are right there keeping all of us safe. If there is anything you should thank God for, thank him for his angels. Remember, there is an angel in your house.